Oh boy, I've been holding back this type of video for a while now. How's it going, everybody? It's the Osura, and I'm gonna talk about some things that I think just kind of need to stop. All right, now, let me clarify this from the get-go. It's not really that deep. Here, I'm mostly gonna be talking about the discussion or discourse that tends to be had surrounding the topic of anime and manga, but I've been seeing some things today that kind of were the last straw on the camel's back, if you will, and these are things that have been building up for a while. So again, this isn't anything too personal. It's not like you're a terrible person if you do all of these things. It's just me kind of voicing my, I'll, I'll just say annoyance with some of this stuff. So first thing we need to get out of the way. For me, the nostalgia, the recency bias, the whatever sort of narrative type argument that you try to put on someone to devalue their argument or their opinion to me is just straight up stupid. If somebody's capable of giving and voicing out their thoughts in a well-explained manner as to why they do like or don't like a series, then you can't just throw nostalgia or recency bias and try to discredit that. Because I see this a lot, and it's funny when it's thrown around with me, because people have tried to accuse me of nostalgia with certain series when I just got into them. Like, what? Also, if they do love a story because of nostalgia, let them. Why does it matter? There are certain reasons why you like the stories you do. We're talking about comparing series, then obviously it's completely subjective when you do this. So if they love a series due to the emotions and happiness that it gave them at a certain period of their life, then let them. The more manga that I've read, the more that I've just come to realize that when it comes to stories, it's just really what you're willing to put into them that you can get out of them. And some people can call that stretching out a story or digging too much into it, but people do it all the time with their favorite series. And that's just kind of how it is. And I know this branching off into multiple different things, but this kind of leads into the next thing I wanted to get about. And it's really the discussion around the big three, because I'll see people be like really big brain with One Piece and with Naruto, but then look at Bleach and be like it has five-year-old writing. Like that always really just boggles my mind, you know? Like, and, and again, that's just part of it. Some people look more into series than others, but the amount of half-assed arguments I see around Bleach is just hilarious. Uh, really quick, might as well just get this out of the way. If ratio is still being used by the year 2024, I'm actually gonna participate in a lot of self-harm because like the baby meme was kind of funny, but then it got unfunny really quick. Ratio has been unfunny for months and people still use it. Like, I am I ask you genuinely, do you find some sort of accomplishment from ratioing somebody? Like, do you feel like you're a better person? Like you moved up in the world? Now, look, I understand. I'm not gonna type out a whole paragraph against somebody who did some doo-doo argument against a series that I like. Like, I get that. I usually just post like the same three or four meme pictures and then call it a day. But my goodness, there's people out there who think because they get more likes under their post that their argument is more valid. But yeah, just getting that out of the way. Now, this next one. Oh boy, these next few. Uh, woo. So let's talk about changing opinions. So if there's one thing that I find to be the most infuriating is when people get upset at me for changing my opinion. And this happens all the time whenever I do a top 10 top 20, recently my top 50 manga, is people expect certain things to be in certain places and get mad when that changes. Listen, I do these top 10, top 50 videos, and sometimes they'll be in the span of a couple of months. Within those months, I have read more things and my feelings over a series change over time, like that happened. As I mentioned, I read more things, time passes, the concepts and the thematics of a series might sit with me and then resonate with me a bit more over time. Also, some of y'all blow this out of proportion a little too much. If I have a manga that was on my list at number 20 and then it drops to like 27, that may seem like a big drop considering a numerical list, but it's still a, like a 9 out of a 10 series for me. Like they would go in the same tier. I need y'all to understand that. A story being at 25 and 26 is really like the smallest of differences. Um, another thing is the word mid. I know that I expressed this in another video and I get it, people kind of go off of the whole school thing where like a seven out of 10 is like you barely passed. I do things a little more like the Fantano thing when it's like zero through 10, where five is just decent, six is decent. For me, seven is good, eight you're above good, nine you're great, and then 10 is, well, you know, 10. And maybe that's just due to the fact that I don't really read a lot of series that I consider like below a four out of 10. Like I don't read that many manga. And I think there's a lot of people out there that will, for instance, take a series like My Hero Academia, will take a series like a Naruto and be like, oh, it's a three out of 10, four out of 10. 
I really urge some of those people to really look into some terribly done manga. I did a video a month ago where I collabed with somebody and we each picked a manga that was really low rated and we went to read those manga and my goodness, it, when you actually read some terribly done manga, series, you, you tend to appreciate series like My Hero and Naruto a lot more. Because we tend not to give those type of series credit for the things they do right. And so maybe this is just a me thing where I tend to be a, a bit more positive looking or I try to be with the series that I rate and review. Try to point out all of the good things that they do before I do get into my criticisms. As I think every series has something to offer in a different way for the most part. Again, it is all opinionated, but it's really weird to me when I see some people try to be really harsh critics on manga. They'll be like, oh, this series is mid. It's a 4 out of 10. And then they've like seen or read 20 to 30 series max, which listen, doesn't completely invalidate their opinion, but I don't think it's a wide enough scale to give an accurate comparison. But we all start from one or two manga, so once again, there's just like a minor thing. Okay, so I've been seeing this like crappy thing thrown around a lot that, that's been repeated a ton where it's like some of y'all think that good character development is when a character goes from smiley face to frowny face. My only issue with seeing this thing over and over again is 9 out of 10 times, the characters that are praised the most are characters who do the exact opposite of that kind of development. Like, it, I, like I don't... Maybe I'm just tripping. If you're referring to characters who get angry, therefore people think a character getting angry is good character development, then I understand. But it, I don't know, it's just a weird one to me. Also, this is a video I'm going to be doing with uh, Chibi Reviews. But, yeah, a character crying or being a vulnerable character doesn't make him a bad character either. Just FYI. Oh, yeah, also, some of y'all throw the word edgy around a little too much. There are some common traits that are seen within a quote-unquote edgy character, right? Tragic backstory, dark design. Uh, there's a certain behavior. I understand that. But it's weird to me when people will throw that term out for characters that are so much more than just edgy characters. Are there just edgy characters out there? Yes. But it's just really dumb to me seeing a lot of people go, oh, you only like this character because it's edgy, or you just think this character is better because they're edgy. When in reality, or at least in my case, when I talk about a character like Guts or a character like Kaneki, yes, they do have dark and definitely edgy moments that are, you know, like they hit you, right? But my love for these characters is their growth out of that stage and period in their life. It's their vulnerable moments. It's their human moments. It's the moments that made me realize this character is a lot more than just a dark badass. So all of that kind of does tie into another point, and that's the oversimplification of a character. I think whenever I see someone just refer to a character as just edgy or just a crybaby or, oh, this character is just boring. Like, listen, no one's forcing you to like a character, right? But don't throw around those terms as if they were objective fact when you refuse to look at all of the other things that go into making that character. J just saying. Also, this is a final thing, and I, I will own up to this mistake because I've used this word incorrectly many times. When I try to review a manga, I try to do so from a critical lens. In, in terms of, I, I try to at least give my reasoning as to why I like or dislike something. So, whenever I've ever used the term objectively in the past, I was probably using it incorrectly. I'm gonna own up to my mistakes. Because I've seen this in ways, and now I see how annoying it gets. I need y'all to understand something. The only thing that's objective when it comes to anime and manga is what happens in the series and what the author says about said series. Whether this series is better than another is completely subjective. There is no math equation. There is nothing that goes into it that you can say, oh, this factually makes this series better than another. Because at the end of the day, that's all based off of interpretation and regardless enjoyment. Now, do I think good writing does contribute to enjoyment? Sure, but then what do we really constitute as quote-unquote good writing? Can I look at something like Kaguya-sama and say, oh, it's not as good as Berserk, when I'm looking at a dark fantasy and a romantic comedy? It's impossible to make those kind of comparisons. So that's just, that's me saying my bad, and for anybody who looked at me and thought it was okay to do that, cut it out. And so look, just to clear up any confusion on this matter, Pun Pun is my number two manga of all time. It wasn't in my top 10 favorites. It isn't even my top 10 50 favorites because Pun Pun isn't something that you enjoy while reading. 
or at least I don't think you should. But that's just my best example of a series just offering different things from other series. And so everybody just has different priorities when it comes to what they want from a series. And that's okay. Even though I think Berserk is my number one manga of all time, again, the key word in that is my. I don't expect every other human being on the planet to agree with that. If at the end of the day, they just tell me, oh, well, I just prefer all these other manga, that's fine. Like, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, some of y'all need a thesaurus as soon as possible. With that being said, this has been the Asura. Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day and peace.